What's going on everyone? Air here and today I'm going to talk about what you should buy first in the secret rim store. So this is important because we have limited controllers. Oh, not everyone can clear every single event. I was lucky enough to clear, I think I cleared every single one of them. So I was able to, I'm pretty much drowned in controllers as of right now. And I still have some I haven't cleared yet. That, you know, there's no rush. The one in the um, Twisted Fate. Probably still another 100 controllers in there. Um, I don't know why I went back there. Right, anyway, so it's really simple, right? So if you use that character, buy that gear. Well, it's true, but it doesn't work like that because some of the equipment in here are actually not worth it. And I'm going to go over that and let's start from left to right to all the way to the bottom. Um, these ones are the ones that I actually bought and use often. So I have a lot of experience about them but these ones I did do enough research and um, with my guildmates help they're also top players in Apex and in PvE so they were able to give me a lot of information about these equipment so these are all just from my personal ex um, opinion not just I can't say it's all from my personal experience from a lot of people's experience and my personal opinion and let's talk about L1 special here so when it's six stars this attack, not 6 stars, 5 stars, level 50, the attack goes to 10% and everything remains the same here. So the dealing skill damage still 30%, chance to decrease cooldown by 5. So the percentage part is not that worth it in my opinion, the attack, like buying a sword that has only 10% attack. Um, effect so we're going to talk about the cooldown but we're going to ignore this part first so dealing skill damage 30 percent chance to decrease cooldown by five percent by by five turns so that one is really tempting and that is the pretty much the main reason why you're buying this sword um so he has two really powerful skills so a uh, sword soul and Frontal Assault here. They're both 5 rounds cooldown. So basically, that sword is made for these two. And it's good because they're so good. You can literally one shot almost anything um, uh, if you're strong enough, of course. Uh, in PvE and PvP, they're just so strong that the cooldown is so long to make it fair, right? To make it balanced. But that sword allows you to use it right away if it procs. So if we quickly go back to this here. Now, is that 30% worth it or not? Now it's up to you. Because any other sword can do better. There's more than just attack with 10%. There's some, you know, seal guarding with plus defense, some sort of plus uh, maybe HP, skill, etc. Right? I'm not going to go over, go over those swords there. Um, but it's up to you. To me personally, it's not worth it because now you are only buying a sword to gamble your RNG. So you have to be lucky to proc. What if you don't proc at all during your fight, especially in PvP, then you only bought a sword with a 10% attack skill. Unless you, you, put, um, you use a clock enchant, then I think it's more worth it with this one. Now you have a 60% chance to proc your cooldown. And, but ideally, if you use um, L1, you want to use full move for max damage. You want to use Breeze, because he's short leg. You want him to have more mobility. Because um, they're all 30%. And, or you want to use Rough C for more damage as well. Rough C is more, less RNG, is like guaranteed damage. But you need to have high enough HP, which he can maintain that because he has talent. Passive talent, he recovers his 30% uh, of his HP when he's uh, 6 stars. So that's it for the L1 special. Next, we're going to talk about Imelda's. So Imelda's special is a must-buy if you use Imelda. So what it does is first, when it's maxed out, is magic defense plus 10, which Imelda is built on intelligent and magic defense. There's nothing else you should build on her. Um, after taking action, mix four allies within two blocks immune to fixed damage. So that's very strong, especially in um, Apex PvP. So we're gonna talk about why it's really good. Uh, where is her? Okay, it works really well with her talent here. 
So her talent unit damage in increased by 20%. And after taking action, cast Iron Hand. So it works again uh, with Iron Hand here. Four friendly units within two blocks. Heroes damage increased by 20%, but they lose 10% HP after battle. So that 10% is the fixed damage. So if you have her special equip, now that fixed damage won't proc. So basically, you're always at full health. Well, not full health. You're not going to lose that 10% HP, your um, friendly unit. And then you'll still get the buff for 20%. So that's a really, really good. And again, like I said, magic defense intelligence is what you need to build. And that gives you max magic defense on a helmet. Aside from this, it's uh, you know Dark Crown, Soul Stealer, and what you call it. I think there's another one that gives you magic defense, which I don't remember. But anyway, so if you're, you you use Emelda, definitely need to get this. All right, guys. Now let's talk about Sonya's um, Dark Dawn here, and I'm telling you, this one is actually really OP because now it adds. Attack and intelligent. You'll be like, why the hell, you know, do we need intelligent for Sonya? Because she's like a, probably a striker, right? Um, and this is also very important here. When actively hitting on enemy with a melee attack, deal fixed damage to enemy one time. Damage times two times the hero's intelligent. And the other one is that if you do a range attack, it'll deal fixed damage of heroes two times attack. So you'll be like, does she even have a two range attack? Yes, she does with her awaken right now so her 3c gives her a well i'm not going to go over the 3c because it's that'll de be, definitely be another video so basically it's a two range attack and then it deals a shit ton of damage and it's like a vice versa if you attack it like um it adds intelligent to your attack and vice versa adds attack to intelligent it basically attacks the hero um main weakness main weakness so if let's say when someone has like high defense and low magic defense then that'll kind of work because it deals magic damage and yeah against mage it'll do more attack damage so that is how it works and then it's amazing because now your weapon here adds both to this so you're only getting more than just one and again um Greasy damage the two range attack, like you can see here. So if you main Sonya, it doesn't matter PVE or PVP, as a must get this this equipment here. And it's I mean he's not very she's not very scary in PVE because um well she needs to stack her talent here. She needs to have stack to make her very strong. Right here. But in PvP here, you have a high chance to get these maximum of two stack in no time. And then when you do your um, 3C, you definitely, well, you should be able to deal a lot of damage. And the fixed damage should be able to help you one shot. Okay, we now have Rachel's special um, suit here. And I honestly have to say that this one is absolutely not worth getting. And this is absolutely garbage. So basically, she's only getting HP plus one percent for her um, for the suit, and when hit with a melee attack and entering battle, deals fixed damage to the enemy one time. So honestly, if you're a mage, it doesn't matter how much fixed damage you're gonna deal; it, you're not gonna do jack shit. And this is only proc on melee attack. So if someone gets into you. And hits you, you're gonna die regardless, especially in PvE. That shit is not gonna help you. But PvP, same thing pretty much. If this is like when hit with a two range attack, then I think this is useful, especially you can possibly trade a kill against Assassin, you can possibly um, trade a kill against, um, I would say, I don't know, a infantry or something. Then I think it's useful, but now. Like you're not doing anything, you're only getting 5% HP and you're gonna die, doesn't matter how strong your Rachel is, your fixed damage is not gonna be a game changer. And there's just so many more better 
um, clothes out there. Like Tanyo gives you a 10% and a 5% when it's maxed out. And there's just anything with better. Well, better, no, not this one. So you do want more HP when you're a mage. Or somehow helping you build some defense or magic defense. So definitely not that 5% HP is not going to do much. Well, if you don't have Tanyo and you want your HP, I guess sure. But still, I just think even that 5% of little HP won't help you. Like, won't help you much. You're probably just wasting your control on this one. So I don't recommend you getting this at all. One up here, Sherry special. This special gear, um, alone if you look at it, it looks very you know tempting. And it's actually very useless. So defense and magic defense plus one percent. So when it's built, plus five percent, and it's just not very good. Even though here, when attacking and entering battle, if you take fatal damage, you will not die. So basically, you can die twice, but only on attacking. So if they attack you, that thing doesn't pro. And if you attack and you die, you only get 1% back. Not 1%, 1 HP back. The 1 HP doesn't do anything. because You don't die and then you can possibly... Especially in Apex, this is useless. So if you move all the way back, especially uh, you don't die, you stay there and then anyone can just kill you with like, uh, I don't know, AOE. So that's not very strong. However, however, if you use her 3C, this special equipment becomes very very OP. So we're gonna take a look at her 3C here. So her 3C, and again, I'm not gonna spend too much time trying to explain the 3C here. Raging Storm here is does a hell of damage, blah blah blah. So after battle, you get your HP back 100%. You get full HP regardless. And when you successfully eliminate a target, so if you kill someone, well, you know her talent here. You can move again. Wild wow, Princess, so if you kill anyone, basically you can move again. And where do you use? Look, we have 3C. Oh, right here. So you either move again if you kill someone. And if you don't kill someone, you're going to stun them. Otherwise, the enemy will be stunned for one turn and cannot be dispelled. So this is absolutely OP as hell. So if you attack someone and you die now if you have the one up now you're gonna revive but after raging storm when you revive you also get 100% HP back so regardless you either kill someone or you st you stun someone or you die while you stun someone you get your HP back regardless so very very OP using 3C and the uh, gear so if you are a Sherry main regardless in um, PvP or PvE, this is a must get if you're going to use 3C. But if you're just using Sherry and you don't have 3C yet, probably any um, suit would be better. So Heinz equipment here and honestly this helmet I think it's actually really unique. So there's absolutely no gear or nothing that can make your hero gain another faction buff effect. So let's take a look. So HP is plus 1% and when max plus 5% and hero talent buff stats plus 1. This is really big. If you use Hind, PvE or PvP, 100% you need to get this. Um, so first, again, he will gain Princess Faction Alliance. So he will be in... Here, even though you can't see him, but once you equip that, which I don't have, of course, he will be in the princess faction here. It won't show, but in game, he will take the uh, he will get the buffs. So, when you have him six stars after taking action, intelligence increased by six percent for five turns, but can be stacked up to four times. So, this is very important. So, four times six is 24. But with the equipment, in, with the special gear here, now your 24% intelligent will be 30%. So it's big because she hits really hard. And with imagine you have $1,000 and all of a sudden you get $3,000. Uh, $300 extra. I mean, $1,000, $300 extra. That's, that's crazy. 
So that's how it works. And the PvP, amazing. Uh, PvE, also amazing. I think PvE works better with this. PvP, not really, because taking stacks, like four stacks, and maxed out would be five stacks. That's five turns. Five turns takes five turns very long in Apex. So it takes five turns for him to be, you know, fully optimal. Then worth it or not, I don't know. There's again when it comes to PvP, I think um, you can use Tango or well, if you don't have it, then that's a different story. But there's just so many more um, choices when it comes to PvP. But PvE, I think this is perfect, especially if you play Princess. Now you have an extra alliance in your um, box. So next we have Shifanio's crown and this one's actually OP even though I said L1's 30% is not very good but this one here well anyway so when it's max it's plus 10% magic defense and this one's a 30% chance after taking the action to gain one skill range and one span. One span is AOE one skill would be like a single attack like single target attack last one turn so this one is really good why is this 30 percent good is because of her talent it's only good if she is um six stars well i don't have her built so now i'm just gonna well single target skill so if that procs that 30 percent this one will be a three blocks into two blocks and then aoe here would be four blocks instead of three blocks and then you have that um heaven sanction here which Instead of five blocks, would be six. So it it's crazy. It just gives you an extra range, even though it's thirty percent. And I'm gonna show you real quick a six star. Sorry, I have to borrow someone's. So when it's six stars, so blah blah. blah this is not important. So oh, it is important, but we're not gonna talk about this. Doesn't uh sync like it doesn't work with the um. The crown there but anyways whenever a skill is used to deal damage is very easy right basically you just use your stuff use your aoe and the cooldown of this skill is reduced by three percent not three percent by three turns that's huge basically you can spam demolish every single turn so once that cools down and now you have a chance to increase your attack range so it's really really good it's really really good if you use stefanio regardless pv or pvp 100% you should get this and of course when it comes to PvP This is a no-brainer. You have to get this Bamboo hat here is Kitty uh Best helmet is not it honestly, I don't think it's amazing Mainly because he doesn't need defense or magic defense. He's just very weak with his defense in general So this doesn't really help but it's extra. It's good um, I mean, it's better than like defense plus one percent. I mean, five percent or defense magic defense plus five percent. So this, you know, getting two from one, so it, that's pretty good. And when the unit is a hundred percent HP, gains thirty percent skill. Well, I'm gonna tell you first. Kitikaz is not an apex character. It's just very weak, and to maintain hundred percent in apex is hard. It's very very hard because just there's so many um fixed damage. There's so many uh, AOE out there. And, or you will probably get one shot already. So anyway, so when is at 100% HP gain plus 30% skill. So there's just no better, like no suitable um, helmet other than this out there for you. Um, we have to take a look at his talent here. So if you look at Kirikazu here, um, so that one plus 30% skill. If you look at his stat, attack and skill, they're top notch. But look at this, this is a C, basically it's, it's just too weak. Okay, now if you have him at six stars, um, crit increased by 15% So that's huge and you have his passive here plus 15% and then now you have his bamboo which skill plus 30% um, There's the math you can do it, but that's basically you're almost getting 100% if you want to be more accurate You can use this skill here crit increased by 20% so if crit plus this passive and his talent that's already 50% And now of course there's other skill that can help you build your skill there's another 20% and there's another 12% so we're not going to go over that this is really an introduction of Kirikaze otherwise so that gives you a lot of skills a lot of crit chances basically with that you are able to restore HP equal to 30% every single attack and that's pretty much it honestly if you use Kirikaze there's no reason not to get it but if 
I, I, it's just not a lot of people built him. He's unique. Uh, he's probably fun for PvE. That's pretty much it. But if I were you, you you absolutely have to use him in your every single challenge. Get it? If you use him seldomly, just for fun, I will save my controllers. Now let's take a... I mean, it's going to be a very long video, so I'm going to break this into two. So these are the one I just went through. Um, these are the next batch I'm going to over, go over in the next video. So now let's take... A look at some that I already got in. If I got it, doesn't mean they're perfect. But um, anyway, so let's take a look at Golden Lion here. This is for Die Hard. Well, Die Hard or D Hard, up to you. However you pronounce it. Okay, I have to tell you that this thing is actually very good. So even though it's magic defense plus 10%, when eliminating an enemy on this turn, stuns one enemy within three blocks for one turn after action. So this works very well with his um, talent here because you can, not this one, it's passive I meant, because you can act again. When attacking damage increases by 10%, if remaining ability is not zero, can move again after attack. So basically if you elim eliminate someone and then you move and then you can stun a random target within three range. So it's very good. The magic defense is not very useful, but it's not bad because he's also B in all these. So basically, whatever you get from any of this will work. Um, so imagine you're in a fight. Um, let's say you you go out, you got jumped, you got jumped by you know a gang, and then you're one versus three right now, and you beat the shit out of someone on I don't know next to you. You beat him. And then randomly, the person behind you got stunned. You beat the guy in front of you and the guy in the back got stunned. Now it's a one-on-one -on -one situation when you're one versus three originally. Think about it. So that's how strong this effect is. Unfortunately, it can be dispelled, but when it comes to Apex, well, really this one is only should be bought for Apex, like PvP. PvE, who cares? PvP, you buy this, You even though they can dispel, but you basically force the healer to you know take an action to just dispel the stun off of your the one that the opponent used stun so very very strong um if you use die heart there's no better um helmet out there other than the golden line black bride here is lana's special um armor chest piece i should say honestly black bride is probably the first thing you should buy if you are buying something from the secret realm store of course if you have lana and you actually build her she this thing is absolutely crazy very very strong okay so now where is lana okay lana right here so when it's fully built hp plus five percent like what i said earlier before usually is you want to get hp so tanyo gives you that ten percent but however this one gives you extra effect so before enter back before entering battle and after the battle is a you know, big difference. So before entering battle is always good. After the battle is eh, because you want to kill them ASAP, right? Because you want to one-shot them. So after battle, those um, effect is good, but not really. So before entering battle, inflicts one random powerful debuff on the attacking unit. So when someone attacks you or when you attack on someone, either or, you're going to debuff them before the battle. So that's really good, especially this one with Astaroth here is super, super good. When battling enemies afflicted by debuffs, intelligence increases by 15% when attacking 30% chance to stun the enemy. So let's not look at the 30% chance um, to stun the enemy. So this is a bonus because 30% is not very high. But when battling enemies afflicted by debuffs, intelligence increases by 15%. So this one supposedly does not give you any intelligent plus percent. But now with the Black Bride, this one will pro 100% every time. Oh, unless they have something to immune that. But there's just so many debuffs out there, you can't immune every single single um, effect out there. So this is really good for PvP, very good for PvE. Especially if you're struggling to fight against um, Ice Dragon, this thing will make it... Well, it's RNG, the effect, but it will help you a lot. So, 100% recommend this would be my first one to buy. 
Kisuna ban here is Matthew special and it's accessory. I'm telling you when it's accessory is brain dead. You should buy it because now you can save your other accessory for someone else. True but not true honestly. So if you're a Matthew lover, 100% you have to get it. So first we're going to take a look when it's fully built. When it allies within 2 blocks, increases attack, defense, magic defense by 10%. So you're getting 3 three stats up by 10%. And you know the translation may, might be misleading. Um, the effect is only on Matthew here. So the only downside is that when an allies is within two blocks. And if you look at his bonds of friendship, um, when you're at six stars, when he becomes an SSR, when entering battle, if a friend unit is within three blocks. So basically, if you're too far, this thing doesn't prompt. You have to be two blocks, so it really only works better if you're using um, class hero. Class, ha class hero, you only have three range to move, and most of the time you should be near your healer or near your tank. It's really hard for you to just you know rush in and you know leave your ally. So with your ally, you should be able to proc this 100% plus 10%, and right here to get that extra 10%. So that's 30% from you know, being close to your ally. So this is 100% recommended if you are getting it for, um, if you're getting accessory for Matthew, because this also plus um, attack. But other than that, if you're using, for example, flyer, um, horse, or archery, you do want to get something else that gives you more attack. Maybe even um, this will help you a little bit better, but just, any other attack accessory would be better if you don't have allies with you because this is not going to do anything. This only gives you these stats and that's it. If you don't have ally, once again, it doesn't do anything it's not worth it. But with an ally, plus 30 plus 10 percent of each is very, very huge. So if you use Matthew and if you use Hero, if you play very closely to your team, 100 percent recommend it. Okay, so the last one we're going to talk about in this video, in the part 1 video, would be this crown here for Alta Muller. Um, this one is absolutely 100% you need to get if you use Alta Muller, because it is his best gear. Um, so here is Defend and Magic Defense plus 5%, buffs you've cast on yourself last for one more turn. So first, Defend and Magic Defense are already huge, because like you can see his stats, they're all A, so they're worth investing on and now if you have your um, fashion buff which lasts four turns would now last five turns other than just that let's say if you have breeze like myself your breeze would last two turns in just one turn so that's really really huge when it comes to um, PvP especially but now you, you have more um, map control and then now you have there's other skills where you can see would be um not this year. Uh, I think it works on the soldier, so I gotta check. Um Right here, right. So his talent here before entering battle attack increased by seven percent, physical damage taken decreased by four percent. So this usually lasts four turns and it stack for four times, but now you can last it for five turns. I don't know if it makes it stack it up to five times. It doesn't, it shouldn't, it didn't say, but then that, that's really, really good. So if you use Ultimiller, 100%, you need to get this. All right, thanks for watching guys. This is only the part one. If you find it useful, let me know and I'll carry on with the part two and I'll see you guys next time. I hope you guys find this useful. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. See you guys next time. Take care.